Hello, my name is Jason Kunst. I'm a technical marketing engineer for Identity Services Engine. This presentation is focused around easy and quick setup for guest BYOD and secure access. Today I will be bringing you through our new wireless setup tool in ICE 2.2 and focus on the BYOD flow for native supplicant and certificate provisioning, specifically around dual SSID, which means you have two different networks, a onboarding network and a secured network after the devices have gone through the provisioning tool. This demonstration will show you how to get this up and running in about five minutes. The wireless setup wizard allows you to quickly configure your wireless flows in a matter of minutes. The wireless setup flows in ICE 2.2 allow you to get ICE in a wireless controller up and running quickly with any necessary configuration along with basic customization and settings needed for your enterprise 802.1x guest and BYOD use cases. ICE plays a critical role in enabling the BYOD model, where employees are allowed to connect their personal devices securely to the network. ICE enables self-provisioning, which allows employees to register their personal devices. ICE provisions the device with its native supplicant during device registration. A wide variety of endpoint types are supported for BYOD. Device onboarding for wireless can be done via single SSID and a dual SSID. This demo will show you the dual SSID flow. Even though the wireless setup tool doesn't support ICE for MDM, with further integration, additional device posture may be used to enforce permissions into the network. Support for BYOD with the Chrome operating system and also MDM functionality are outside of the scope of this tool. Now let's get into using the tool. After logging into the ICE admin UI, in the upper right you'll see this little play button where we can launch wireless setup. We come in and it gives us a choice of between our three different use case flows, guest, secure access, and bring your own device. Here we'll be going through bring your own device and with the dual SSID option which configures one SSID for onboarding and another SSID for your network connection. We'll enter our wireless controller information, IP address, username, password, which are used for the tool to, to reach out to the wireless controller and do configuration via the CLI. Also a shared secret, which is a requirement for radius communication between wireless and ICE to enable um, any, any of your uh, guest BYOD or secure access flows. We'll register the controller. You see the, the, the controller is here. We can go ahead and commit that. Hit continue. Next, we'll choose a, an onboarding wireless network. We'll call that BYOD onboard. That network's used so that the, the clients will connect to an open network and enter their employee credentials and then be uh, directed through the onboarding uh, the device network supplicant and certificate provisioning flow. Here we'll use, uh, we'll just use our guest network since it is most likely in a, um, a DMZ since it's an open network and it's um, unprotected. Go ahead and add that network and commit it. Next, we'll configure a secure wireless network. This is, this is a network used um, once, once the device goes through the supplicant and certificate provisioning. It's a secured network using uh, 802.1x with certificate-based um, authentication. And now we'll be using a VLAN called um, Access, okay? We click Add, and we'll commit that as well. Next, we'll connect to our Active Directory domain. Uh, this is needed. Most likely, your, your users are going to be part of your AD. Um, since they're bringing in personal devices, they're going to be uh, authenticating with their, um, with their AD credentials. So you type in your Active Directory domain um, and any account that's uh, needed to uh, go ahead and add a computer to the domain. And we'll join the domain. So that's it. The AD is added. Uh, we optionally give you the, the ability to also map other um, AD groups to other VLANs. We're not going to do that here. 
Um, what that means is you'll, you'd be able to maybe have marketing or sales, um, have different uh, VLAN or uh, um, given access to, right? So you want, if you wanted to separate those types of, of users. And here we're just going to say any employee is going to get access to the same um, virtual LAN after they connect to that secure SSID. I'll go ahead and commit that. Next, we'll get into our portal customization. You see here we have the BYOD portal and the My Devices portal. Uh, My Devices, you cannot uh, customize directly. It does take on the theme of the BYOD portal. So you can go ahead and edit the BYOD portal. You can see that um, it has common settings that, that are used, um, all the pages that are available in your BYOD flow. You can change your colors, your fonts, okay? Uh, you can get in, like I said, look at the different pages. Okay, see how those would look. You can change the text on them. You can upload a, a, new, a different logo, a different banner and background if you like. Also, this gives you the ability to um, preview in a desktop mode, so what it would look like on maybe Windows or Mac OS X full browsers, a tablet mode, you know, such as an Android or an iPad, or in um, an iPhone or such as a Samsung Galaxy, for example, how it would look on all those, all those different types of devices in, in mobile and tablet and desktop views. Uh, after you get done with that, you can go back to edit. Uh, here, we're not going to make any more changes. Uh, it's pretty simple. I will commit those changes. Um, and once you go ahead and commit the customization, you'll have the ability. Um, it's updating our portal customizations. It will give you um, a a live test URL as well. So if you wanted to go through and, and do some of the basics, you could use that test portal here without a real client. Keep in mind, without a real client, you won't be able to go through the, B, the whole BYOD flow because we won't be able to sense what type of device it is um, and send down any appropriate uh, configurations. This is a simple test. It's not, it's, it won't bring you through the full flow. Also, you can get in here and look at the My Devices portal um, as well. Uh, we'll, what we're going to do here next is configure mydevices.demo.local with, with an easy URL, a custom uh, FQDN per se. So when your users are asking, you know, how do I go ahead and manage my devices, they can use that mydevices.demo.local, which we'll get into later on. We'll click next, and what it's going to do here is um, submit any final portal customizations and changes. And here we get the nice summary screen telling you you configured a wireless controller, you have an onboard, um, you know, your initial onboard SSID and your final secure SSID, you used an AD, uh, here's your demo.local, uh, you have a BYOD and a My Devices portal. Uh, now we'll hit go live and what that does is that enables that wireless LANs, the wireless LANs that you created. And that's it for using the tool. Next we'll get into, into um, using a real client, see how it goes to the flow. So here we'll run a real client, my iPod, and I already have a connection to BYOD onboarding, uh, SSID. Uh, in this dual SSID flow, what happens is you connect to an open network that BYOD onboard. It is also um, known as a central web auth or a guest portal. Uh, with the tool, we do not configure or allow guests to go through that uh, open SSID. Uh, if you need to, if you need a guest portal, you can use the guest flows. Here we'll try to connect to Cisco.com. We'll be redirected to ICE. Here we're redirected to the guest portal. This is used for bring your own device onboarding with the wireless setup tool. As we discussed before, you cannot access this portal using a guest account because it has been disabled. If you want to enable guest, you'd have to set up a, a guest flow with the tool. So here we're signing with our employee credentials. Sign on. Then the employees uh, has to accept an AUP and they're redirected to the BYOD portal. Here they give it device names such as my iPod. They can put a description in it as well. They launched their Apple Profiler and Certificate Installer tools. So what's happening here is we're accepting this certificate from ICE. Um, Apple devices uh, are not able to um, 
install this ahead of time. So we have to install this certificate. Uh, even though it says not trusted, it's actually trusted now and verified. That was set up so that the device could securely talk to the ICE server. Uh, next, what we're doing here is we're going through SCEP, right, the um, Simple Certificate Enrollment Protocol, so that we can uh, get our, um, so we can go ahead and get our um, certificate and our native supplicant provisioning profiles. Uh, this is using Apple over the air um, provisioning tool from ICE. So as I said, stated, it's enrolling the certificate. It's also getting uh, a Wi-Fi profile coming down from, from the identity services engine, also our certificate authority. So you see here we pre-configure the native supplicant. Um, we have um, Wi-Fi networks configured. Uh, the certificate f for the device to use for EPTLS certificate-based authentication and the server certificate is in that package all bundle, bundled up nicely t so that the, the, the device can go ahead and um, properly do certificate-based authentication into that secured 802.1x network. Um, the Apple devices do not have the ability to switch to the secured network now, so what we have to do here is go back into our Wi-Fi settings and select that secure network. So from BYOD onboard to BYOD secure. Now that we're connected to the secure network, we can go over to general and then go down to our profiles. We already went through the details of those profiles, but you can see that they are installed. Uh, one is for the, the ICE server and the other is a native supplicant and certificate provisioning that, that took place. Now we can go back over to our web browser and you'll notice that we can now get to <clears throat> the um, final site that we wanted to get to, cisco.com. And that's it for the real client. Here we'll go back to ICE and look at exactly what happened um, with our client connection, or with the tool configuring uh, ICE, the different policies and settings. You'll see here now we have an active endpoint. We have one total endpoint here as well. We can go to Operation Radius Live Logs and look at the flow that, that took place. What happened here was I first came in and I, uh, my device was unknown. Uh, we hit the guest portal with wireless, with wireless MAB. Okay. Uh, we were redirected to the BYOD dual um, portal redirection. Um, then we, what, what happened there is we went through the onboarding process and we, um, I'm sorry, we logged in with the employee and then we went through the onboarding, um, onboarding process. It was noticed that it's an Apple iPod with our profiling capabilities and visibility. And finally, after um, after we we uh, we went through all that flow, we were we connected back in with the employee, and we hit a different authorization um, policy um, of permit access. That's pretty much much it to the radius and the dot one x flows and everything through that connectivity from the open network um, to that secured network. Next, what we can do is we can go up to work centers. First, what we'll do is we'll look at that. We're, we're going to get under guest access because the, oh, the dual SSID f starts with an open network, right? The, the onboarding network. And so what we can look at here is we have under guest access network devices, we have our wireless controller configured. Next, under guest access, since we first, you know, we first come through the flow through an open network, that is a guest portal. You'll notice that uh, we have the, um, our, our onboard um, portal uh, configured from the tool. That portal did take on a new, you know, customization and theming from from what the tool did for for you, right? It's not using the the normal customization out of the box. So we can go over the portal customization, and we can see that in a little preview that that customization uh, did take place, as you can see when we went through the flow. 
And that, that's it to it. You know, if you want to change more settings, you want to customize it more, you can go ahead and go in here and, and change that portal as well. Uh, next, we'll go over the work centers, BYOD. Okay, and we'll look at ex external identity sources. So once you logged in uh, with the employee credentials, that was linked to our, our Active Directory join point. Okay, we, we configured as um, demo.local. Next, over to our, our client provisioning policies. And what are these used for? These are saying basically when you go through BYOD, I, we came in with an iOS device and we got a certain result, the Cisco ICE native supplicant provisioning profile. That has the settings in, in it to configure our SSIDs and whatever settings we need for um, certificates as well. So we can go in here and look at the Cisco ICE NSP under resources and see, see what took place there is that we configured a BYOD secure. A network that's that's what we configured, okay, uh, automatically from the tool. Next, we can go over to our portals and components. You'll notice that um, we do have a um, we don't have a BYOD portal because the guest flow is what takes care of that, okay. Um, in single SSID, you use a BYOD portal. In dual SSID, you use a guest flow that has BYOD components to it. Look, we'll look under my devices portal see a new My Devices portal was set up. That My Devices portal as well um, took, took on that customization that we were talking about. Okay. Not only did the tool configure that customization and theming, but we also have um, portal settings where we gave it that easy URL to get them to My Devices portal, which we'll look at um, after we finish looking at the ICE policies. Next we can go into policy elements. Under authorization profiles, you'll notice that we have a dual, the, the um, dual portal set up here. Okay, and what, what this does is gives the, it, what this um, authorization profile does is it gets, gives the user um, access to be redirected to that um, onboard um, that onboard guest portal along with an ACL BYOD redirect sent down to the controller. And finally, we get into our authorization policies. Here, you, here you'll notice that when you first come in, you have wireless MAB, and when we connect to the BYOD onboard, we get redirected um, to that dual BYOD portal for guest. Uh, the user went through all the onboarding, and then when it's done, we do we are reconnected to that secured network, and it validates um, that we did certificate-based authentication against that BYOD sec secure um, SSID. One fa one last thing I want to showcase here is that now the user can go to my devices. Demo. Local. They can log into that portal. with their, their AD username and password where they can go ahead and manage their, their personal devices that they brought in. And you see my iPods in there. From here, the user can go ahead and mark it as lost or stolen um, or even delete that device if they, they maybe um, reached their limit of uh, five devices. And that's it for ICE. Now we can go over the wireless controller. And we could see that um, our, our wireless LANs were configured. One for onboarding, that's using the Mac OS bypass um, to the open SSID um, with, with the Mac filtering. And then our BYOD Secure that uses a certificate-based authentication with uh, WPA2 and uh, 802.1x. Uh, next, under security, we can see that the RADIUS auth and accounting servers were configured. And as well, um, our access control list, we have the ACL BYOD redirect, which you saw in our authorization um, profile for that redirect um, authorization role. And that's it. Uh, we, you know, we went over a lot of items. Uh, we went through using the tool, uh, which took about five minutes to get it up and running. We showed a real client, right, um, going through that. And then finally, what ICE, ICE and the wireless, contr uh, wireless controller policies looked like. Uh, thank you for watching this video.